everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm Anne from the Sussex Handmade Soap Company and today I'm going to be showing you how we make our goat's milk soap. Our goat's milk soap is one of the very first bars that we created when we actually first started our soap business and it is a popular one with our customers. We tend to find the kind of customers that purchase our goat's milk soap are the customers with sensitive or problematic skin. And although we can't actually make any claims as to how the soap will help your skin, the only claim we can make is that it will cleanse your skin, we do find that customers purchase the goat's milk soap and then they try it and then they come back and they actually tell us that it helps with their sensitive skin and it helps with things like eczema. As I say, we can't make those claims ourselves and we do not make those claims ourselves, but we get customers who do have those kinds of issues and they tell us that it helps. So, you know, it's great to hear that kind of feedback. We also leave our goat's milk soap unscented, so it is better for people that want to avoid sort of essential oils or fragrance oils or things like that in soaps. Now, when it comes to actually making the goat's milk soap, it is slightly different to how we make our regular soaps. We replace 50% of the water in our lye solution with goat's milk. So whereas we would normally use, say, a thousand grams of water to create our lye solution, with our goat's milk soap, we only use 500 grams of water. And then the remaining liquid is 500 grams of goat's milk. You could actually create a soap with a 100% goat's milk replacement for water, but we don't do that. We kind of think that the 50-50 works for us and it creates what we think is quite a nice bar of soap. With our goat's milk soap, we also soap at room temperature, which we don't do with any of our other soaps. And the reason for soaping at room temperature is that the goat's milk soap is more prone to overheating due to the sugars and the lactose in the goat's milk. And the last thing you want to do is scorch or burn your goat's milk because then it will not smell very nice at all and it will go brown and it will not look attractive either. So we always soap really low down at room temperature, which for us is around about 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or thereabouts. Um, and we also use frozen goat's milk just to help keep that temperature down even lower. So I'm gonna show you now how we actually create our soap and take you through the process and hopefully you guys will find it enjoyable. So the very first steps in creating our goat's milk soap is to create our lye, water and goat milk solution. And what I have actually done is I have weighed out our 500 grams of water and I have added the lye into the water and I have stirred it to combine it and then I have placed it to one side to cool down. And this has actually been cooling down for a good couple of hours um, and it is now down to 79 degrees Fahrenheit, so around about room temperature. And now that the lye has cooled right down, I'm going to add in our goat's milk. And here we have got 500 grams of goat's milk. And we are going to slowly add this into the lye water. And because of the sugars in this goat's milk, it is highly likely that our lye water is gonna to start to heat up again as I add the goat's milk in. For that reason, I'm going to add it slowly and I'm going to be taking the temperature regularly and I'm going to be keeping it well below 100 degrees Fahrenheit just to make sure that, that milk doesn't scorch. So this is perhaps the most tricky and the most involved step in today's actual soap making. So yeah, we are going to transfer the goat's milk slowly into the lye and water solution now. So just using a stainless steel spoon to take a small amount of the goat's milk and carefully transfer it into the jug. And then I'm going to stir it in until it has dissolved. And then I'm going to repeat and add a little bit more of the goat's milk in until we have used up the entire pan of goat's milk. So now that that first chunk of goat's milk has pretty much dissolved, I'm going to add in a little bit more. So being very careful with this step because obviously we do have the lye in here. And it does take a little bit of time to complete this step. It is not a quick process and if you try and rush it, the chances are you will end up scorching your goat's milk. So just take your time and go slowly with it and be prepared to be kind of doing just this step for a good sort of 15, 20 minutes or so. I'm just gonna take the temperature now. And we are up at, oh, 
91 degrees already. So we started at 79 and just that small amount of goat's milk that I have added in already has brought us up to 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So those sugars and that goat's milk really is raising the temperature back up. And I'm actually going to place it onto a uh, little ice block now, just to kind of try and keep that temperature down nice and low. It may not make a huge amount of difference, but hopefully it will help in some small way. And I'm going to continue doing this, adding in the goat's milk bit by bit. But I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me for 15, 20 minutes adding goat's milk to lye water. So we will cut that there and I will come back to you guys when all of the goat's milk has been incorporated. So after about 15 minutes of slowly adding and stirring in the goat's milk, we have now managed to dissolve it all and we are now at a temperature of 94.1 Fahrenheit. So we are still below that 100 degrees that we didn't want to go above and we are nicely dissolved. But let's all take a moment just to appreciate the science of how we started with a liquid that was 79 degrees Fahrenheit and we added a frozen substance into it and we've actually raised the temperature. I just, I love science stuff. I love things like that and why things happen. I just, I just find it interesting. <laughs> Let's, let's move on to step two with the soap making. So we've popped our lye solution to one side now and now we are going to concentrate on our oils. In here we have got our solid oils which we have melted down on a low heat and again we have got these now down to room temperature and we are now going to add in our liquid oils and you can find the oils that we use in our recipe just down in the description link if you do want to check out how we make this soap. Let's get the liquid oils in with the solid oils now. And then I will just take the temperature just to check they are at an acceptable level, but I, I kind of already know they are because I've already checked the temperature, but for the purpose of the video, I shall check it again. So we are at 73.9, which is going to be absolutely fine. So let's get the lye solution into the oils now. Pouring carefully in. And now we are going to use our stick blender to bring it to a light to medium trace. And because we are soaping at a lower temperature today, I want to be careful just to watch out for false trace, which is where the oils start to solidify and give the impression that the soap is tracing when in actual fact it is not. And I'm also going to be aware that again, because of the low temperatures, it may take longer than usual for this soap to actually come to a trace today. So we have now brought our goat's milk soap batter to a lovely light to medium trace. It is looking really lovely and creamy. There is no sign of any scorching or anything like that at all, which is brilliant. And this is the point at which you would add in your fragrance if you wanted to scent your soap. As I said before, we do not actually scent our goat's milk soap, but if you wanted to, something like a lavender essential oil might go really nicely in a goat's milk soap, or perhaps a Mei Chang, or just, you know, a light citrus scent, I think would go quite nicely if you were going to scent it. But as we are not, we are going to move on to pouring it into our moulds now. So this is definitely the part that requires a certain amount of strength because this pan is heavy. I'm just going to pour out each soap loaf almost to the top. They can always be refilled at the end if need be. I love the contrast of the white of the goat's milk against the blue of the moulds. Mm. 
nearly there now. This is number four out of five. And the last one now. Perfect. Woo. So that is our five loaves of goat's milk soap poured. And we are now going to put them to one side for 24 hours and then we are going to unmold them. Uh, we actually just pop them to one side and make sure they stay cool. I know some people do put their soaps into the fridge or perhaps even into the freezer when it's something like a goat's milk just to ensure that it does stay cool, doesn't heat up too much and you don't get a kind of partial gel ring running through the soap. We tend to find that just by leaving them somewhere cool they don't tend to get a partial gel ring and we do still end up with a really nice creamy white bar. Uh, the other thing is unmoulding tomorrow. Our bars generally are able to be unmoulded after 24 hours, sometimes with the goat's milk because it is done at a cooler temperature. They do take a little bit longer to be ready for unmoulding, but generally 24 hours seems to be okay. If you wanted to be able to ensure that you could unmould quicker, you could add sodium lactate into your mix and this does help the soap to firm up a little bit quicker and be ready for unmoulding a little bit quicker but we tend to find that we don't really need it because as I say these should hopefully work tomorrow and now I've said that they probably won't but we shall see come back tomorrow and see how they look so 24 hours later and we have unmoulded our goat's milk soap it has unmoulded really nicely really cleanly and I'm happy with how it's looking so far so now it is time to chop it up using this bad boy. So just going to get it into position on the cutter. And it's slicing really nicely. Not too soft, not too firm, just how I like it. Let's pull out a bar and see how it looks. And there we have one bar of goat's milk soap. And as you can see, it's got a really nice kind of creamy white colour running through it. It is not scorched. We have got no scorch marks or burn marks or gel ring or anything like that. So we are really happy with how this one is looking. So that is how we make our goat's milk soap. And just to address one question that you may have, because we get asked this a lot at our shows, it does not smell like goats and it does not smell like goat's cheese. It has just got a very nice, very delicate kind of creamy scent to it. Certainly not unpleasant and certainly not strong either. So I hope you have enjoyed our video and I hope it has kind of been a little bit informative for you. If you are thinking about making milk soaps, hopefully it will help you. If you didn't want to make milk soaps but you just wanted to watch our soap making video because you thought it looked like fun, then thank you for sticking with us. And if you do wish to actually just purchase a bar, you don't want to make it yourself, you want to purchase a ready-made bar, you can do so on our website here. And you can also use our discount code for 20% off. If you have enjoyed our video and you like our content, please do hit the subscribe button and do give us a like and a comment if you wish to. We shall see you again on Tuesday for another midweek video. And until then, have a lovely weekend and bye. <laughs> Who goes around sniffing goats?